Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I will discuss about uh, this product IBM integration bus. I will give a little bit about history and why this product is really used in, in any production uh, like applications. Okay, this IBM integration bus, okay, the most, uh, it is mostly used for the integration purpose between a application A and application B. So this may be between application A and B or it may be a different set of application. We may have connect multiple application and we can do orchestration between different or uh, different application altogether. And this is, is capable to you know integrate with a, a wide variety of technology. I'll come in a second but before that uh, let me discuss a little bit about historical uh, product because this uh, if you may see this product is seems to be you know. Uh, new, but actually it has a wide history and there is not much changed uh, from beginning. So initially there is a company which is known as Neon. Okay, they initially created this product and before 2000. So they usually uh, after that around uh, 2001 it was acquired by Cybis and then it uh, come to IBM uh, platform. And in initial days around 2001, so this product was known as MQ uh, series integrator, MQ series integrator. So that was a quite uh, big product and a uh, lot of projects still use it. Um, they of course upgraded it. So if you see what I mean by used it, if you see a lot of command line tool and all other pro in the product, so you can see the difference of MQ SI. In lot of places till today and IBM is very fond of rename, renaming or rebranded their product again and again so after some time they have changed it to WebSphere because WebSphere is a very popular brand across IBM to uh, you know to consolidate all the software under this BPM and integrational area so they rebranded this product with WebSphere MQ integrator Initially, this was designed to work hands in hands with the MQ product, which is a messaging system. So I'll create a couple of other tutorials, but that is a, a little bit a different topic than what we are discussing today. And after uh, version 5, this was again rebranded to Westbier Business Integration Message Broker because the MQ was a different product and Message Broker is grown to not only support uh, MQ, but also some different protocol. And again, after 6.0, they again uh, remove this uh, business integration and they just only uh, call it as a WebSphere message broker. So this product was quite popular and uh, so version 6, 7 was announced uh, around 2009. So uh, till today, a lot of people still using WebSphere message broker. So there is a smooth path to, you know, migrate into integration bus. And around 2013, Okay, so this IBM integration bus version 9 was launched and recently around 2014, uh, little part of it, so I, IB version 10 was launched. Okay, so this is about a little bit historical idea about uh, the product. So let me explain about uh, why we ex exactly need this product, what are the uh, uses of it, right? So as I uh, said, this is used for the integration purpose okay but why we usually need integration purpose because a application for example let's say a can be developed by a plethora of different technology you may because of certain decision you may have developed by java or few people in our organization they develop using dotnet or php or a lot of python javascript or a lot of other platform we have for example mainframe or SAP system. So initial days, right? And nowadays web service and REST are quite predominant and a lot of people are using REST for communication and uh, SOAP web service. But in the initial areas, all have a, their different mechanism of talking to each other. So there is no standardized thing. And also, let's say for example, the communication is also evolving. For example, if B is available at the same time, so A and B can communicate directly. But for example, this B is not available all the time. 
so it is there is a base job which is running in the over the night only okay so usually in that kind of scenario so the asynchronous uh, mq was quite p uh, popular so people drop a message into the queue or file system so this guy whenever is available will the pick the messages okay so there are a lot of different technologies so just to put simply if you uh, see about transport protocol or uh, technology underlying technology it is quite varies so we may have simple http call or now it is a little bit popular in terms of a lot of people says rest but underlying both are using a rest uh, http protocol so there are uh, other web service soap over you know uh, soap over http this is also use http protocol but the underlying message it will transfer in xml format will i will explain in very detail i'll create example so that you will understand how to achieve each and everything okay and also till today a lot of uh, system or in, uh, enterprise systems still relying on the file system and we have different uh, integration of point for example sap uh, you know sibol and a lot of other uh, this kind of stuff so and this guy, uh, because if you want to develop in uh, java so you have to download a open source library then you have to connect to soap there is no unified way to do that so to connect to soap will be different to connect to http rest will be different file will be different and you have to learn a lot of other technology the way they do logging the day, way they do exception handling will differ from each uh, integration to other so for example sometime in, if you want to use dotnet to mainframe so you may be getting very tough time to find any kind of built in you know adapters to talk to them so you have to spend a lot of time in underlining tcp or underlying technology to write any adapters to that so slowly your technical platform will make it complicated so this iib will help for uh, allowing that mediation it will do so it will tell java which of the language you are comfortable whether you if you want to talk to me for rmi or cobra i am fine with you you know you send the message which is you are most comfortable in and i'll understand what to do next and i'll talk to the whatever the end system you like whether it is mainframe whether it is sap it is my job to you know give a simplified version of the technical platform what you are comfortable so i will give a plug in adapter or kind of very simple to use so that you know you no need to change anything you like for example dot net i can provide you dll files so that you can call using mfc call so that you can be more comfortable in calling my iib okay so this kind of technical mediation tool do also at the same time the data structure between various application will change for example sap they have a xml structure but the data model is quite different so they use something known as idoc format okay if you talk about mainframe they use something known as you know cobol structure right so each format is completely different from one to another so c is different xml is different and in xml also you know millions of different standard for finance supply chain for uh, telecom communication so the change is if you want to face a address you have to understand a lot of your their different uh, support so it would be very difficult to interchange so you have to write adapter you have to pass the messages you have to serialize deserialize a lot of stuff you have to do but this iib will understand this cobol idoc format and it will give a very unified uh, uh, tooling support to the developer and it will uh, create this uh, you know complexity from the developer itself even though the people who are developing in iib they no need to be well versed about the mainframe or the cobol structure they simply need to call this adapter and this will do the error handling exception handling and changing the data from a simple xml or the standard by iib to the cobol so this will automatically develop by the no uh, engineers from ibm ibm software lab so they spend huge amount of energy for testing their code and doing whatever they can to make it very stable and millions of people are using it across the world and a lot of different uh, maybe in thousands clients are using this product i don't have the number so for that but because of a lot of bugs and a uh, lot of support throughout this decade so this product is quite stable right so you'll able to leverage their learnings and the best practices to use it and also apart from that uh, where it is signed right so uh, this is uh, technical mediation it will do it will uh, change this data format and also 
So there are other important thing we can uh, achieve using this integer symbols. So we can do end-to-end -end monitoring in, inside the application, inside an enterprise system. Because a lot of flow will go through this ESP. And we, this is the layer where we can, uh, you know, track one transaction flows from which system to another. We can uh, do some kind of auditing, centralized auditing. We can do proper uh, uh, events monitoring. Okay. And also based uh, on certain condition, we can uh, uh, route the message into a particular application and to some other application. For example, if uh, one message is something X, so we'll route to X. Or if it is Y, we'll route to Y. So this kind of uh, routing is possible. And also if some message is coming, we can change the formatting from day to from certain format, which is applicable or used by X or Y application. So data enrichment, data uh, improve, uh, enrichment. So all this kind of thing can be possible using this IAB layer. So once we do some kind of example, these are the very uh, simple concept to grasp and we can use in very efficiently. So today's session is all about giving a basic history and uh, different part of the component. We'll get into more detail in the coming tutorials. So thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please like it. If you have any comment, whatever, what, whatever may be, please leave a comment. So I'll definitely reply to it. So you can subscribe to it if you want to watch some of my new videos. So have a nice day ahead. Bye-bye.